If you're new to video editing, how do you know what to do? Well, for sure the process doesn't come naturally. Well, maybe not, unless you're Steven Spielberg. As with everything, it starts with planning of what you intend to film, and this will depend on the complexity of your video. But no matter what, you should have a plan for what you're going to film. Let's look at some simple things to get your editing started. You could consider these as the rules, but be aware you can break the rules to bring out your own personality. But as the saying goes, you need to know the rules before you can break them. And number one is know your audience. The single most important consideration before you start editing your video is to imagine who will be watching it. How do you keep their attention? If you've got multiple audiences, well then maybe edit more than one video. Number two, edit out the stuff that you don't need. Less is more. And this ties in with number one. There are only two people who will watch the footage of a wedding video. That's the bride's mother and you. The bride's mother will even complain about scenes that you missed. Everybody else will be asleep in 10 minutes. Remember, the word edit means a remove. And number three, keep it simple. The easiest way to edit most things is with a main shot and then use cutaways. Let's say you're making a music video. The laziest thing to do is one continuous shot of the entire performance synced to the audio track. This static shot in itself is boring. Nobody wants to watch three minutes and 15 seconds of one continuous scene without any changes in the action. What you need to do is to improve that experience and also shoot some cutaways. After shooting your continuous shot, go back again and shoot close-ups of the guitar player grimacing, the singer shaking his mullet, and the audience screaming and throwing their hotel keys on the stage. Then in the edit, you put these cutaways on the track above the continuous shot and that's without interrupting the audio from the continuous shot. The audio track always stays synced to the continuous shot, and then you can cut away to the other shots to keep the video looking dynamic and fresh. This the same sort of sequence works for family footage and even a wedding. Your main shot might be the three-up shot of the bride and groom and the celebrant. Then you need to shoot cutaways, and these will best work with a second camera. They could include a medium shot of the bride's father, a close-up of the bridesmaids crying, children fidgeting, a wide shot from the back of the hall, and then some panning shots across the audience. And if you don't have a second camera, then you can get these shots at a pause during the main ceremony, or you could even get them before the ceremony or after. A good example of why you need to plan when you're filming. These extra shots are called B-roll, which just means other stuff, or in other words, fillers. In your edit, you drop these selections from your B-roll on top of the main shot. You don't want audio from the B-roll, you always keep the audio from the main shot. And number four, keep each scene to just a few seconds. The audience gets bored if scenes are more than a few seconds in length. Switch the main shots to B-roll or cutaways, and you can always use still images or photos for the cutaways. And number five, cut out zooms and pans. And this follows on from number four. Beginners tend to film everything even while zooming and panning. And this is especially true of family events, when the camera moves from one part of the room to another, and the camera is stays rolling during those pans. Then in the edit, the tendency is to include everything, well, at least more than necessary anyway. Zooms and pans look unnatural. A zoom is not something the eye can do, so it looks out of place in a video. Cut as the camera starts to zoom, and cut back as the zoom is completed. And when you view the result, you'll not miss what was cut out.
Do the same for horizontal pans unless it's an integral part of the story. And number six, avoid transitions. That's except for fade and dissolve. Just because your computer has a star wipe transition doesn't mean to say you're compelled to use it. Though, with the exception of a few scenes from a Star Wars type video, you rarely need a transition other than to dissolve or fade to black. You might think a star wipe looks cool, but it's going to wear off after the audience has seen it a few times. On the other hand, if you want to announce the start to a new story or show a scene that's a jump back in time, a transition will really help that effect. And the tip, the extra effect, if you're using a video transition like this that's obvious, then add an audio sound effect. That'll make it much more obvious to the viewer. And the real answer to transitions is that they have their place, but as I said before, you need to know the rules to be able to break them. Now number seven, watch out for jump cuts. A jump cut is a long static shot with the middle section cut out. It's called a jump because when the viewer is looking at the shot, the person's head may jump from one place to the other. One easy way to avoid a jump cut is simply add a cutaway over the edit. And the cutaway can be almost anything that has some relationship. It could be a close-up, a shot out the window, Another person in the scene, or even a price point if you're doing commercials. A flashback scene, a wink, or a smile. The idea is to distract the viewer so that they're not looking at the jump when it happens. The eye sees it, but the brain doesn't register it. And number eight, watch out for continuity errors. Continuity is a term for something that was not the same in a previous edit. And this was most important during filming, but even though the error has been filmed, you should watch out for inconsistencies when you're editing. You could even avoid these shots altogether in your edit, or you could hide the error in some way, and that's another use for B-roll. So how full was the glass? Where was the dog sitting? When did that particular person stand up? Was that person wearing glasses? Paying attention to continuity helps the viewer believe the story that you're telling. Number nine, good editing for the most part is invisible. A good editor can take the viewer from point A to point B, and when it's over, they won't remember how they got there, only that it was seamless and they're not distracted from the story by some jarring edit effect. Number 10, cut on the action. One powerful convention of editing is cutting on the action, and this makes cuts flow together. Of all the things you can do to make a video look more professional, cutting on the action will give the best results. It's the smoothest way to transition between shots, especially shots that may have otherwise nothing much in relationship. Keep this in mind, it's the action itself that hides the edit. A common example is a person walking up to a door and reaching for the knob. And just as the hand touches the knob, this is the perfect opportunity to cut to a shot of the door opening from the other side. You'll see the effect in this shot, where the door opens by itself for some reason. There's a cut to the scene of the actor walking over to close it, and the viewer doesn't notice what's being cut out. The motion carries the viewer from one shot to the other. Imagine a football game. An obvious cut would be when the ball is passed, it's caught in place for a goal kick. The second player kicks it, and there's a long pan of the ball before it goes over the post. The cut would be from the kick, and then to the ball going over the post. Matching action is part of what's called classical cutting. And it means that when you're cutting between action shots, or moving things, that's hands, heads, whatever, need to be in the same place at the end of the cut and at the beginning of the next shot. Even if you're not cutting on fast-paced action football games, everyday situations present plenty of motion effects. People sitting down, turning, opening an oven, walking through a doorway, a door closing, 
These are all actions, and every one of them provides opportunities for making natural and seamless, invisible cuts. The action itself is the mechanism that ties those two shots together. Anyway, those are a few tips to help you make your video not only looking more professional, but more importantly, it'll be more interesting to your viewers and hold their attention longer, making you the hero of the hour. You can download the transcript for this video, click the eye above. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and press the bell. There are new videos every Sunday. Thank you.